Hello to my uh, high-def friends. I need to sync up my cameras and go live real quick, so sit tight. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. It means the very world to me. Thank you. Greetings, unsettled souls. <coughs> Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for the Media Speaks, coughing through his monologue. Only the best here at the Media Speaks. That's hilarious. Um, friends, I've got a whole bunch of news to get to today. I do want to real quick report on something that I noticed uh, just firsthand. Uh, the sources are me. Um, if you want to know my sources, me. I lived it. It's me. Um... Yesterday, I was blessed enough to go to the Children of Bodom Tear and Death Angel concert. Oh, my God. Might I say that Jan Werman is, like, the best living, composing keyboardist alive today. The man is simply genius. I got to meet him. It was wonderful. Um, but here's my story. Uh, for those of you that might not like Children of Bodom, uh, look them up and you will find that you, in fact, do. Because he's amazing. Um, the story behind this is when I was in Cleveland, my best friend, Billy D. Bass, of my band Passing Time, um, we drove around Cleveland looking for an Italian restaurant that was open on a Sunday. Nothing. I mean, literally nothing. And we looked and all we saw in certain parts, and this is downtown Cleveland, down, like a major downtown part, Nothing. Closed businesses. Closed. Places for lease skyscrapers with nothing in them. Um, and to make a long story short, friends, Cleveland is indicative of what I'm hearing from listeners and they reading in papers everywhere. Things are getting real bad. If you have any money in out, look up what a PAMP is. P-A-M-P. You can invest in silver for almost nothing. And again, I'm not making any money off this. I wish I had a, a silver sponsorship. Guess what? I don't. I'm giving you uh, what I've learned here, bits of knowledge. It's why you tune in. Uh, get yourselves into gold, metal, platinum, whatever. Friends, we are not in a recovery. I'm telling you, uh, on a Sunday, Cleveland is a boneyard. Of course, it's banging on Friday and Saturday. It's not my point. My point is... Two or three years ago, there were 50, 50 people waiting to feed my fat ass a lasagna dinner. And suddenly, there's nothing open on a Sunday. And it gets worse and worse all the time. This, uh, there, there, is, there, I, mean, I noticed as we were driving around trying to find a place to eat, I ended up at freaking Burger King. Death. Um, good death, but death. Um, I noticed when we were driving around stores, mall, nothing's open. And these were things that were open before. And that you, you're finding places, you could tell they markered out their hours and they're working uh, less even on weekends and weekdays. Uh, play, we were calling places, looking for places to eat, and we were getting disconnect notices. That the businesses weren't even around anymore. They're still showing up on, on apps that look for places to eat. Friends. We are not in an economic recovery. I repeat, we are not in an economic recovery. All right, guys, I'm going to go on to something kind of amazing here. This is from Tech Dirt. At long last, Jimmy Carter is finally right about something. And before I, I, I tear into my tirade, as I always do on Carter, let me say this. The man wasn't really the best president ever because anybody who's of a liberal mindset is automatically going to do a bunch of things to screw the country up because that's the way they're set up. But Jimmy Carter, make no mistake about it, is a good man. I, I, I'm willing to believe Jimmy Carter is a good man. He genuinely cares about people, and I think he genuinely cares about his country. And I think everything the man did was most likely done with a purer heart than most politicians. I'll say that. I understand he's a Freemason and some rather spooky things, but you get the point. Um, was I a Carter fan? No. Other than Obama, I think he is the worst president of our lifetime. But that does not mean that I think he's a piece of garbage. I don't think Jimmy Carter is a piece of garbage. I think he's, 
He was a, generally a good person. He simply was not a good president. That's that's the correct views. Uh, look at it. Um, former President Jimmy Carter, who is completely right on all of this except the criminal aspect, says that he believes that the NSA is likely spying on his communications. There's a link to it. So he actually avoids using email when communicating with foreign leaders. You know, I have felt that my own communications are probably monitored, Carter told NBC's Andrea Mitchell in an interview broadcast Sunday. And when I want to communicate with a foreign leader privately, I type or write a letter myself, put it in the post office, and mail it. I believe if I send an email, it will be monitored, Carter continued. Um, let me interject that that's rather creepy in and of itself, that he feels that he would need to do that. And let me add, second of all, and I agree with him, uh, second of all, I hope it's nothing important. I mean, we're sending snail mail here like we were doing back when Carter was in office. Of course, regular letters are quite frequently intercepted and read as well. The United States Postal Service already scans and stores, there's a link to it, the front and back of every single piece of mail. I hope they like my really twisted artwork. But it's still rather telling that a former president feels that his own communications with foreign leaders are not private or secure. Someone should set him up with some encryption rights. Meanwhile, in a separate interview, Carter said that he thinks Snowden's revelations, who many of you know that watch this show, I am a firm supporter of, uh, was probably a good thing, even though he thinks Snowden probably broke the law. Any law that is um, a counter to our given rights is meant to be nullified, is it not? There's no doubt that he broke the law and that he would be susceptible, in my opinion, to persecution if he came back here under the law, he said. But I think it's good for Americans to know the kinds of things that have been revealed by him and others. And that is that since 9-11, we've gone too far to intrusion on the privacy that Americans ought to enjoy as a right of citizenship. Well spoken, Mr. Carter. It's not a full support of Snowden's actions, it says, but it's a lot further than any others have gone. Either way, Carter thinks the NSA has gone too far. I think it's wrong, he said, of the NSA program. I think it's an intrusion on one of the basic human rights of Americans is to have some degree of privacy if we don't want other people to read what we communicate. God bless you, Mr. Carter. Uh, Washingtonsblog.com Nuclear power is expensive and bad for the environment. It's being pushed because it is good for making bombs. Oh, but Sam, no, no, that can't be true. This is a repost, but I wanted to get to it. Since the 1980s, the U.S. has secretly helped Japan build up its new nuclear weapons program, pretending it was nuclear energy and space exploration. As demonstrated below, nuclear energy is expensive and bad for the environment. It is not saving the planet. First of all, dummies, we're not warming it. Second of all, nuclear is not the answer because it is bad for the environment that you claim to want to protect. The real reason it is being pushed is because it is good for helping countries like Japan and the U.S. build nuclear weapons. Forbes points out, nuclear power is no longer an economically viable source of new energy in the United States. The freshly retired CEO of Excellent Americans largest producer of nuclear power who also served on president's blue ribbon commission on america's nuclear future said in chicago thursday and it won't come economic it won't become economically viable he said for the foreseeable future i'm a nuclear guy rose said and you won't get better results with nuclear it just isn't economic and it's not economic within a foreseeable time frame U.S. News and World Report, another source after Fukushima, the power plant disaster in Japan last year, the rising costs of nuclear energy could deliver a knockout punch to its future use in the U.S., according to a researcher at the Vermont Law School Institute of Energy and the Environment. Uh, God, I hope so. From my viewpoint, the fundamental nature of nuclear technology suggests that the future will be as clouded as the past, says Mark Cooper, the author of the report. The new safety regulations enacted or being considered by the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission would push the cost of nuclear energy too high to be economically competitive. 
It says the disaster insurance for nuclear power plants in the U.S. is currently underwritten by the federal government, Cooper says. Let me pause. For those of you that say, well, you loved Ron Paul so much and he was an anti-nuclear. Well, thankfully, he was not for funding these, uh, these sorts of things at all. It's not in the Constitution. He wouldn't have funded them. Therefore, a nuclear would have been eliminated simply by his political beliefs, uh, not because of his stance on nuclear. Without that safeguard, nuclear power is neither affordable nor worth the risk, as I just said. If the owners and operators of nuclear reactors had to face the full liability of a Fukushima-style nuclear accident or go head-to-head -head with alternatives in the truly competitive marketplace, unfettered by subsidies, no one would have built a nuclear reactor in the past, no one would build one today, and anyone who owns a reactor would exit the nuclear business as quickly as possible. In other words, if the government wasn't paying them to exist, they would not exist. And they're paying for it out of your pocket. And even when a nuclear power plant is running the exact way that it's meant to run, it is still releasing things like tritium into the environment on a regular basis during what's called routine releases. And they are, as a matter of fact, as in fact, as in Helen Caldecott, Lauren Murray, uh, Chris Busby, Kevin Blanche, um, giving you cancer upon each and every uh, iteration of that practice. Alternate reports, it goes on. An authoritative study of the investment bank, Lazard and LTD, found that wind beat nuclear and that nuclear essentially tied with solar. The wind and solar being simple and safe are coming to line faster. Another advantage wind and solar have is that the capacity to be added bit by bit. A wind farm could have more or less turbines without scuttling the whole project. As economies of scale are created within the alternative energy supply chains and the construction process becomes more efficient, prices continue to drop. Guys, I think we're on the right path with all of this. Let's also remember that uh, man is not warming the planet. Look at climategate.com. Uh, we can phase these things out by using oil. It says... Uh, Harvey Wasserman reports, the only two U.S. reactor projects now technically under construction are on the brink of death for financial reasons. If they go under, there will be almost certainly no reactors built here. How can you help them not to go under? Stop investing in any electric company that has anything to do with uh, nuclear energy. If you're in a mutual fund, if there are General Electric or uh, uh, other corporations that are electrical in some way or power-driven, energy-driven, pull your money out of it and put your money into mutual fund stocks. They mature a little slower, but you won't be funding your own death. It is very important that we listen to Harvey Wasserman on this. Um, they're getting us a link on Washington's blog. It says, Georgia's double reactor Volktel project has been sold on the basis of a federal loan uh, last year, President Obama promised Southern Company, get out of Southern Company stock. I'm doing the show for a reason. I'm telling you ways to shut it down. Parent Georgia Power, get your money out of Georgia Power. $8.33 billion in financing from an $18.5 billion fund that has been established by the Department of Energy under George Bush. That is your tax dollars. Until last week, most industry observers had assumed the guarantees had been a done deal. But the Nuclear Energy Institute, an industry trade group, has publicly complained that the Office of Management and Budget may be requiring terms that are unacceptable to the builders. I just told you how to stop it. Bad for the environment, Alternet points out. Mark Cooper, senior fellow for the economic analysis at the Vermont Law School, found that the states that invested heavily in nuclear power had the worst track records on efficiency and developing renewables than those that did not have large nuclear programs. In other words, investing in nuclear technology crowded out developing clean energy. Let me guess, you hate the long-haired guy. You hate me. You don't like watching this show. You think I'm a prick. Guess what? You, if you are helping any, if you're buying anything from General Electric, stop it. You are helping the nuclear industry stop the wind and the solar. 
that you care so much about. So even though we don't like each other, you and I are on the same team. Nuclear energy is not an alternative to energies that increase global warming because nuclear increases global warming. When high-grade uranium runs out, nuclear will be worse for CO2 emissions than burning fossil fuels for those of you that believe in global warming because you're crazy. Global warming advances. Nuclear becomes less efficient as reactors must shut down to avoid overheating. Good for making bombs. Uh, if nuclear energy is expensive and bad for the environment, why is it being pushed so heavily? Why did Fukushima reactors use plutonium instead of uranium? We need a little background to understand the answers. Virtually all of the nuclear reactors in the U.S. are the same archaic design, archaic design as those at Fukushima. This design was not chosen for safety reasons. Rather, it was chosen because it worked in Navy submarines and produces plutonium for use in nuclear weapons. Indeed, safer designs such as thorium reactors, which I'm not in favor of, but I don't have a closed ear to, were left on the shelf because they don't produce weapons-grade plutonium, and otherwise they didn't pick the safer one. They picked the one that would give millions of people cancer just so they could make bombs under the radar. Governments have been covering up nuclear meltdowns for 50 years in order to protect the nuclear plant production of weapons-grade nuclear material. They have also suppressed the findings of their own top scientists about health risks and radiation. Indeed, nuclear, regulators are, nuclear regulators are just promoters of the nuclear cycle. Um, this is what Joseph Trento said. The United States deliberately allowed Japan access to the United States' most secret nuclear weapons facilities while it transformed tens of billions of dollars worth of American-paid research that has allowed Japan to amass 70 tons of weapons-grade plutonium since the 1980s, a National Security News Service investigation reveals. Oh, but Sam, they're not allowed to own nuclear weapons because of how they lost World War II. Did you listen to the last sentence? These activities repeatedly violated U.S. laws regarding controls of sensitive nuclear materials that could be diverted to weapons programs in Japan. The NSNS investigation found that the U.S. has known about a secret nuclear weapons program in Japan since the 1960s, according to CIA reports. Read the rest of the article, friends. It's only about weapons. It is not about our safety. It is not about helping the environment and saving the caribou. It is about nuclear weapons. And it is about making money for people who are involved therein. Look up the rest of the article. It's on Washington's blog. Um, New American Alex Newman, a UN plotting to dramatically alter your views and behavior. But the UN is our friend. They believe in global warming and we can solve it by building nuclear power plants. The United Nations is currently working on a far-reaching plot developed with the radical Obama administration policy architect John Podesta to, quote, profoundly and dramatically, and quote, alter your worldview in the name of shackling humanity under the UN-managed Universal Sustainable Development Agenda. Don't forget, Agenda 21 is Agenda 666. If you don't know what Agenda 21 is, then look it up. You will be appalled. According to the controversial project, the link included, produced for UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon by a team of establishment eminent persons within the next six years, no realm of the, human, of the human experience will escape the profound transformation toward a new paradigm demanded by globalist bureaucrats. Well, you're turning into the correct views because you want it put in human terms. That sounds like I was reading an eye chart. Um, they want to make sure that the commercials that you see, the shows that you watch, the movies that you view, the songs that you hear, the ads that you read, the papers that you get your news out of, they want to make sure that this agenda is drilled into your head as fact, whether or not you like it or not. And then once you believe it, they can suck money out of you. And if you don't believe it, then they'll simply run it for a generation because your kids grew up believing that it was real. And then they buy into it because according to what they've learned their whole life on Sesame Street commercials, it has to be true. 
The UN document, while packed with contradictory machinations, essentially outlines what establishment proponents of global government have long described as the New World Order. In essence, the UN panel called for a top-down restructuring of human civilization under the guise of tackling poverty, unsustainable activities, and climate change. The international outfit and its most dictatorial member regimes will set the agenda, with regional, national, and subnational governments expected to foist on humanity. What the hell does that mean? It means that they're going to set up ways to set up a one-world currency, one-world government, a, way, a, a, a taxation system, uh, some way to get money, a bail-in, some way to get money out of you to pay for the things that it wants, um, to, pay, to pay for them to continue leading all of us like sheeple to our slaughter. Um, to continue taxing you for warming the planet when you're not as excuses to get money out of you and continue to brainwash you into believing that it's actually true. Literally every person on earth must submit and, submit and contribute, it writes, the planetary establishment claimed on multiple occasions in a radical document. It is not immediately clear what would happen to those who refuse. The report on the post-2015 development agenda dubbed a global partnership eradicate poverty and transform economies through sustainable development, nice short name, was compiled and endorsed by a high-level panel of eminent persons. Under the plan, expected to be discussed later this year at a UN meeting in New York, a planetary treaty on sustainable developments. Basically, they are going to ignore the science that proves that man is not warming the planet. They are going to spy on you more, and they are going to tell you that it's all for peace and all for uh, unity, and it's going to be done by the United Nations. It's a rather long article. Go ahead and look it up. It's also posted on Prison Planet. Um, it's, I'm going to read the last paragraph. I do like it. The UN takes off the deceitful mask and tightens the screws. Opposition will undoubtedly continue to surge. One surefire way to break the back of the schemers is to elect members of Congress who will support legislation, getting the U.S. government to defund and withdraw from the dictators club known as the United Nations. That's the best advice ever. American resistance to the globalist plot will be enough to stop it, however, it depends largely on educating the activating the public. Friends, there's a reason that every religion warns against a one-world government. There's a reason that atheists can even see that it's a really bad idea. Look up the article, it's worth it. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, and we are funded in part by the Arcadia Grill. And if you want to get some really good food, it is awesome to have people uh, funding this show who I actually stand behind, who I actually support and can say good things about. And that's very, very easy to do when you're talking about the Arcadia Grill. They have delicious food. They have reasonable prices. They have a bar that knows how to make a good drink. So make sure you go there and support them. Also, do you read or are you an idiot American like the average Lady Gaga fan? Because if you do read, you're going to want good reading. And a lot of times, I, I can't even read fiction because I'm studying for the show, researching for the show. But if you can read fiction, I suggest you to read the work of Mike McLaughlin. Uh, you can get a hold of him, M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Uh, the email address is archangel underscore 44703 at yahoo.com. Why should you do so? Because he writes short stories. He writes really, really good short stories. And he sells them for a very low cost. Keeps him going. He's looking to get a book written. And his fiction is really, really good. So do me a favor. Go check out the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find him on Facebook, too. A few more stories to get to. Adam Salazar, Infowars.com. Obama surcharge appearing on restaurant bills across the country. This is where I piss off all of my usual libertarian vid listeners and say, good. Do I like Obamacare? No. I absolutely detest it. But if these bastards had charged just a little bit more in their restaurant bill to give these people insurance, then Obamacare, which is an awful idea, wouldn't have seemed like such a good idea. Do Am I in favor of socialized medicine? No, because that implies that you're forced into it. I am in favor of there being uh, universal health care that you're allowed to opt out of if you choose to. Um... 
Why? If I, you're a libertarian, why would you want? Because you're responsible for yourself, but you're not responsible for uh, being born with MS or Crohn's disease or something. There are things you can do to keep it in check, but you're always going to incur medical bills with those kinds of things, and you should be covered because a sick nation is not a, a productive nation. I'm glad this is happening. I'm just upset that it took Obamacare to do it because Obamacare is going to be worse for people than not having insurance was. The small business mandate doesn't go into effect until 2015, but restaurants across the country are already passing the extra cost associated with having to offer health care to the employees and customers. As they should have been doing, they should have already been insuring them, even if they're part-time, yes! They should have already been insuring them, and we wouldn't be in this position. Spend an extra dollar for the damn pizza, so we don't have the federal government in our insurance pockets. Double D Sourdough Pizza in Denver recently started adding a 5% surcharge to customers' bills in order to pay for half of the health care cost of the employees. You know what? I'm happy to see it. The article goes on that it's been showing up on restaurant bills all over the country. Good! It's about time we made sure that all of us had insurance. I, again, I, I'm against anything that says that you have to be in it. But we do need a better health system than the one that we had. And that is where I depart from a lot of the people that I vote for. I'm not against health care for all. I'm against mandatory health care for all. Uh, Businessinsider.com. Uh, why is this story not getting any attention? Um, oil rig worker thinks he saw the Malaysia Air Flight 370 go down in flames. Well, we've established due to his coordinates, supposedly, they fudged everything else, but supposedly that it, it's, not, it's not there. It's not where it says it is. Okay. The point is, the man saw something like a plane on fire falling out of the sky, and nobody seems to give a damn. Well, it's not the Malaysia plane, so who cares? I don't know why this might be important. I guess anything on fire falling out of the sky, which could be killing people, if it's not the Malaysia plane, it just doesn't matter. What's wrong with me? And yet another odd twist to the mysterious story of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. A New Zealand man working on an oil rig in South China Sea has come forward and say he believes that he saw the airplane on fire right around the time that it disappeared. Again, we've established, uh, we hope, that this is not the Malaysian airline. But nobody seems to find out. Uh, nobody gives a rat's ass what it might have been or who might have died here. We care about drug smugglers so much, and yet we're not going to see if maybe a plane went down. This doesn't make any sense to me. Mike McKay, a worker on the Songa Mercur drilling platform, sent an email to his bosses detailing his version of events. McKay says that he observed the plane burning at a high altitude in one piece about 5 to 70 kilometers from his location. He gave the coordinates for the location of the rig, which recently moved from Cuba to the shores of Vietnam. <clears throat> McKay's employer confirms that the letter posted online by several news outlets continue and is authentic. ABC's Bob Rubra spoke with the Japanese Edamitsu Oil and Gas Company after acquiring the letter to confirm the letter's veracity. McKay, who carries a New Zealand passport, said that he tried to contract the Malaysian and Vietnam officials about what he saw several days ago. Well, they said that they did find his email, in fact, and they looked it up, but, uh, you know, it's not the Malaysia plane. Maybe you need to do a better job of looking in the ocean because something fell out of the sky on fire. Uh, for those of you listening on the, uh, on the high def, you're going to blink off and there's probably going to be a part two to this. I'm going to post both parts. It's just the way this camera works. I don't know why. Uh, Freebeacon.com. Florida Democrat, without immigration reform, where will we get our landscapers and maids? That's the dumdy of the day. I would never say this. I am not in favor of this. If I was to say, well, we need Mexicans, who else are we going to get to work for slave labor? That would be a prejudice statement. That would be a real crappy statement to make. And yet, that's just what's said here by this idiot who wins the dumdy of the day. Florida Democratic congressional candidate Alex Sink said immigration reform was important at a Tuesday debate because with 